the Lundberg lens. So I'll cover the topic of a Lundberg lens, talk about what it is, how it's constructed, and we'll end this with some simple numerical studies to sort of bound what are the minimum and maximum permittivities that we can have in our Lundberg lens. What is a Lundberg lens? A Lundberg lens, it's a spherical object, like what I'm showing over here on the right. And it's a spherical object where the permittivity has a value of two at the center and then fades down to a value of one at the very edge. And the profile that it follows is given by this equation, where little r is distance from the center of the Lundberg lens and big R is the radius of the Lundberg lens. Now, if we do this, here's what happens. Look over on the right. So let's look at the red lines. Think of these as rays. And so a wave front would be perpendicular to these rays and a wave front comes in. And what happens is that flat wave front would get focused to one point on the opposite side of the sphere of the Lundberg lens. Now, since this is spherically symmetric, we could do a similar thing over here. Uh, so I'm drawing a whole different direction in blue and our wave front would be perpendicular to these lines. This wave front would come into the lens and be perfectly focused at the other side. This also works in both directions. If I could stick a little dipole source here on the blue dot, it would radiate in all directions. Now, of course, some of that would radiate backward, but whatever radiated in the direction of the sphere would end up coming out collimated. And so a lot of times you'll see Lundberg lenses stuck on the end of an antenna to collimate that antenna and give the beam a bit more directivity. That's a Lundberg lens. So let's simulate a Lundberg lens. And I think that will help us become a lot more intuitive about how the lens works. So here we're looking at a sort of a two-dimensional cross-section of the Lundberg lens, and we have a wave coming in from the upper left at some you know, arbitrary angle. It hits the lens, it starts slowing down, and what we see is that it gets focused at the very edge of the sphere on the other side. Now, it's very difficult to make a perfectly graded material, not impossible, but difficult. Well, one way this can be done is with effective materials. Imagine making a mesh and varying the size of the holes of the mesh. The bigger the hole relative to the mesh, the lower the permittivity would be. And so by this, we don't actually have to vary the permittivity. We can build the device from one, one perfect permittivity and just vary the size of holes to vary the effective permittivity. And what we can see is that this ends up working quite well. And a lot of people make Lundberg lenses this way. In fact, I might even say I've never seen a Lundberg lens with a perfectly graded permittivity. It's always made discrete or done somehow with effective mediums. So you can buy Lundberg lenses and here's what they look like. They are concentric rings of different ceramics. And of course, the ceramic would have a value of two or something close to that at the at the center and then work out to as low as it possibly can get towards the edge. And in fact, that's why this material is flaking away at the edge. That's more of a foam becomes very fragile because they're trying to get a permittivity close to one. In more recent days with 3D printing, we can 3D print Lundberg lenses that actually have a smoother profile than the discrete lens we showed on the previous slide. And there's lots of success going on uh, this way. And here we see a, just a flat, blunt waveguide. So of course that would radiate in sort of a broad range of angles. But if we stick that against the edge of a Lundberg lens, it would come out collimated on the other side and be a relatively directive beam. Well, there's no fundamental length scale in electromagnetics, and we can scale this down. And in fact, there are Lundberg lenses at optical frequencies. And you can chase the reference at the bottom to read about this, but there are others. And this works the same way. We are collimating a beam on one side and focusing at the other of this Lundberg lens sphere. There's also been some work to get Lundberg lenses that are flat. 
Uh, very often the size of a Lundberg lens is not very convenient. So folks are employing spatial transforms like transformation optics to try to flatten these. And the way the transformation optics works is we define a coordinate transform. And in that case, we would define a coordinate transform that would squash this effectively. And what's really neat, uh, Maxwell's equations have a property called form invariance, where we can take the transform, the math of that transform out of the coordinates and move it over to the material properties. Now we're sort of back to regular X, Y, Z, and we have this rather crazy map of the permittivity and permeability. However, now we can make things that are misshapen according to that coordinate transform, and this flat design in principle would behave the same way as this big design, but be physically smaller. Now, very often the drawback of this is the properties for permittivity and permeability that you get are rather extreme or unrealizable. That makes us have to use things like metamaterials, which are also narrow band and lossy. And now you can imagine all the research going on here, trying to relax the material properties for these transform designs or better metamaterials. And we can go crazy with that. But there is a lot of work trying to get flat Lundberg lenses. I want to end this just with some quick numerical studies that we've done to try to bound the what's the minimum and maximum permittivities that you can put into a standard Lundberg lens and still get something that behaves like a Lundberg lens. Here's a numerical study where we have a Lundberg lens and we set the minimum permittivity to one at the outside. And we're studying what's the effect of the maximum permittivity on the inside. And so we're grading that from one to four. So exactly a one, we have no Lundberg lens, we see a flat plane wave. And at some point it behaves like a Lundberg lens, focuses at the edge of the lens. But what we can see as we increase the permittivity, that focal point actually moves inside of the lens. Now, maybe that's something you want. If you want kind of a flat edge of the lens, that could be made to work very well for you. But for a, the ideal, perfect, pristine Lundberg lens, it seems to be that the maximum permittivity at the, at the maximum, at the center of the Lundberg lens that we can tolerate is about 2.25. I think above that, the focal point walks too far inside of the Lundberg lens. But as I mentioned, maybe we can just chop off part of the Lundberg lens so it has a, a flat surface. So now we can set the maximum to exactly two. What's the minimum permittivity that we can tolerate on the outside? Now, ideally that should be one, but that's very hard to realize a material that has a permittivity of one. Well, how, how close can we get that it still behaves like a Lundberg lens? And looking at this study, it looks like at a value of 1.3, it still behaves essentially like a Lundberg lens, but the higher the permittivity at the outside, in other words, the higher it is over one, well, the less it behaves like a Lundberg lens. So based on these values, we can use values like this to better design effective Lundberg lenses. Well, it's, it's a Lundberg lens with an effective material where we're varying hole size to try to vary permittivity. So I hope you found this helpful. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.